So, welcome back to Third Age Reforged and to another battle replay, and today we make a return to the dusty lands of the south and the Haradrim. We'll be trying to hold on to this settlement, which I guess the closest thing to this would probably be Fine Nobel on the, uh, on the map, uh, the Haradrim capital that they use in Divide and Conquer. I suppose that would be the closest uh, thing that the Haradrim would have to a city like this, especially seeing as it's on a river or next to an inland sea. Uh, that would uh, seem to make the most sense. The map is called Haradwaith, I believe, as well, so it's definitely uh, intended to be a southern land. Um, and it is an interesting siege as well, because the attackers definitely seem to have invaded navally, because as the deployment zones are, the defenders do have access to the high ground and this section of the city over here, but the rest of it uh, was all the deployment zone of the attackers, so the ships have dropped them off and left to potentially go and get another wave, and that it's going to be up to them to try and scale this hill and take the Haradrim keep at the top. But Harad are not going to be fighting alone today, they are going to be fighting alongside the Black Numenorians of Umbar and the Orcs of the Misty Mountains who are a long way from home, but their numbers are always going to be welcome in Evil's camp. I think there is quite a clear way or a path to victory that the defenders can, or the attacks I should say, can actually take here, uh, because three of their armies are over here and they do have the potential to try and cut Umbar off. Uh, but it does look as though Harad have uh, potentially tried to think ahead a little bit to give them a bit of cover, a bit of a screen. But we shall see um, and talk more about that uh, when we get onto the defenders, because we will go through the attacking armies first of all. Um, it is a law-friendly battle this time around as well, no one's decided to go rogue on this occasion. Um, starting off with Kotumba, who's going to be playing as Dale. Very nice faction to have on the attack, because your archers can really blunt the defending archers very nicely, and if you can take away the ranged advantage of defenders, regardless of who they are, you're setting yourself up for success. And they also have some solid units uh, in the melee as well, very tough and dependable units. Stuff like the Barding Herd here will be really good, especially against the Goblins and against the Black Numenorians, should they get into a line properly. The Dismounted Earls also make for an ideal backup to them. Uh, the sounds of the sea in the background, which is quite soothing. There's also some Dalian Spearmen. Again, another good unit for holding the line. They're much less damaging than something like the Barding Herd against armoured units, and they're less effective against infantry, certainly, than the uh, Earls of Dale. But, um, as spears, they do tend to do a very good job at holding the line, even if they don't do an awful lot of damage in comparison. Bardian Marksman here sands the armour upgrade, but they don't really need it to be a really good skirmish archer. Uh, there's also some Lake Town Pikemen in there, which can be very useful for the same reason that any cheap pike is, because they can punch well above their weight if the engagement is favourable. And there's some Lake Town infantry in there as well, nice light infantry archer hybrids. They are going to be marching alongside their dwarven friends today. Cabbage Juice, who is playing as the dwarves of Khazad-dum. Definitely one of the uh, most Im impressive infantry factions in the game, if not the most impressive, depending on what your priorities are. We've got some Third Legion here. Obviously, as you're on the attack, you're going to have a little bit less money to spend per army, so he's decided to uh, go without the armor upgrade today, but even without that, they're an incredibly tough unit of infantry to break down. And the Warriors of Khazadum are the uh, slightly lower tier option, but in comparison to most of the, well, two of the factions they're facing off against today, I don't think uh, infantry dominance is going to be too much of a problem for them. Umbar, considering their higher funds, army to army, probably could have the beating of Khazadum, uh, but of course um, they have less units on their team as a whole anyway. Second Legion Axe Guard can also deploy their armor piercing most effectively against Umbar. Orc Hunters, very good damage that uh, they offer for a Dwarven Archer. Um, they don't have quite the same level of armor as some of the other Khazadum units. They're still tanky enough, um, but yeah, very, very good uh, unit there. Guards of Khazadum are the armor-piercing bodyguard unit for the Dwarves, and they can obviously do a ton of damage, very, very effective. Sons of the Fallen, very, very nice spears, and then of course the Mighty Hammers of Gundabad as well for even more armor-piercing damage. So he's got plenty of armor-piercing in his uh, repertoire today, has Cabbage Juice. And as if that wasn't enough quality, the Warius is going to be playing as Imladris. He's got the Elder Enway Spearman. Probably less of an armor-piercing slant on Imladris, and more just base damage and melee defense, I would imagine, as is the Elven Way. Uh, so he's got a couple of units of Elder Enway Spears on the front. You can see it's a small army, though. Imladris, when they're on the attack, if you want to go quality, as it seems like the Warius has done here, um, you have a very small army, very effective, but also you open yourselves up to being the one that the defenders try to focus down, uh, because there are simply less of you. Elder Runway Archers, he's got the Gwythi Rock Door as well, which are a devastating unit for knights, probably the best unit of all round knights in the game. Um, albeit in individual areas, they are outclassed by a few others, but as a complete package, um, they are probably the best, in my opinion. Got some Gwythi Myrdain as well, or the Zebras, as uh, they have become affectionately known in the comments. Uh, but yeah, very devastating unit of uh, shock infantry, that. 
Imladris Guardians, not often you see the Imladris Guardians without their armor upgrade, but here they are, had to cut corners somewhere, did the Warriors. Even without the armor upgrade though, they are an incredibly powerful unit of line infantry. Same sort of thing applies really as to the 3rd Legion. Archers of Rimbell also foregoing their armor upgrade, so they're actually pretty vulnerable to being skirmished. But they're still obviously going to be able to lay down that high damage that Elven Archers do. Bruin in River Wards and Eldrunway Swordmasters round off the roster with some heavy swordsmen. Then we have the player who sent me the battle replay, which once again was DF Demons Hunter, so big thank you to him. He's going to be playing as Gondor today, so he was Arthur Dane last time, and today he's playing as the southern half of the uh, disunited kingdom at this point in time. Fully upgraded Gondor Archers, very good in a skirmish in much the same way as the Bardian Marksmen are. Bardian Marksmen are slightly better because of that shield value, but the armour upgrades make the Gondor Archers a very fine pick for that sort of thing as well. No danger of them being out skirmished by most of Harad's Archers, certainly. Citadel Guard as well, very nice unit of armour piercing spears. I think they'll be exceptional, to be honest, against the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, should they be utilised properly. Against Harad, AP is less useful, I would say. Um, Gondor and Harad have got very fine balance between the two factions, as I've said before, and it's often a very interesting uh, matchup. The Fountain Guard, obviously very good for holding the line again, armour piercing edge to them. Back here, having to forego the full levels of armour upgrade on the Gondor infantry here, just the, just the one level this time, but that should be enough to make them a uh, decently strong bulwark. Um, the same can be said about the Gondor spearmen in behind them as well. There is actually some with the full upgrade, so you can tell that he stretched his budget to the absolute limit. Fully upgraded Axeman of Lasarnak as well. So again, even more armor piercing this time from Gondor. Also more heavy swordsmen. There's a lot of shock infantry going on for the attackers here. Um, so there's plenty of good targets, or at least better targets, for uh, the defending skirmishes to try and go after. Uh, but the Ravenhelms and the Gondor's shock infantry in general has got such high armor that they can mitigate that somewhat. Ravenhelm's obviously not armor piercing, but uh, better base damage and melee defense. Pelagia Marines, Javelin to Javelin, Gondor won't beat Harad, but it's always nice to have a supporting tool like this following you in. And then, of course, the mighty Nimlothian Honor Guard, which is where the general is going to be. Pretty much a shielded bodyguard tier version of the Fountain Guard. And finally, we have Cardlan, played by Lord of the Fallen. He has got some Greenway Garrison Spears, so just a basic unit you know, of spears there that you can use more freely. His general is going to be the Hearthguard of Amon Sul, a nice morale boosting unit. Um, having said that, morale boosting as morale boosting is an interesting topic, which I think I'll probably let J Monster explain. I'm sure he will at some stage, uh, but suffice it to say that morale boosting may not have been as important um, in recent versions of Reforged and in Silmarillion, actually. Um, that, um, that I thought it was and many others thought it was. But nonetheless, still there, nice supporting unit. Manatar Roman Gatekeepers, again, really powerful crossbows with those Halberds. Minheriath Sharpshooters, really powerful crossbows with those Maces. There's a few hidden units here, I'd imagine the Dunedain Rangers are here. He's also got the cheap Pikes in the Greenway Garrison Footmen, some cheap Archers in the uh, Greenway Garrison Archers, the Dunedain Captains, some Minheriath units as well, the Men at Arms and the Spears. Um, and he does have a unit of Dunedain Commanders as well. Not often you see sort of regular Lancers be used for good reason, they're just not as good, as um, not as efficient certainly, as the highest tier of cavalry, but I'm glad to see them because I do like the Dunedain Commanders in terms of their style. And there's some civilians as well. Now we shall move on to the defenders. Like I said, Umbar's going to have to sort of hot foot it over really. There's no easy way into this settlement though because the way to get in from this side would... Well, I guess he can use this little cliffside path to go around the back over here and go up this way because the Misty Mountains will be able to hold from this side. But it's going to be interesting to see how Umbar tries to get across. It may be where the battle is won or lost to be honest because Umbar, they're going to need that quality and that survivability in their infantry force, I think, the defenders, if they're going to be successful here. They do have a trebuchet as well, which could be worth its weight in gold if they get it into the right position over the choke points. Ardenaim Shield Guard are here, which again, fantastic holding unit. For a unit that costs as much as they do, you might be a little bit disappointed with the damage, but where they really shine is keeping themselves alive and holding a line. Algrondas Legion are also good at that, but obviously they twin that with a bit more damage because they utilize a sword rather than a spear. Got some Belagaya Pikes to help hold on as well. Narun Aru Sentinel, so a big pike contingent from Bar, which again makes it all the more important they need these units on the front line to hold off against the quality and quantity that the attackers are bringing today. I'd imagine crossbows and rangers are also the order of the day as far as these this clear patch of hidden units goes. Corsair Blackguards, and finally, Castamir himself is going to be in the Harbingers of Castamir. 
And back over here, you can see there is actually a large cavalry force as well. Warlords of Umbar, Alcarondas Faithful, and Ardenaim Lancers. So the standard Lancers, heavily armoured, but again, underwhelming because this class of unit kind of is in Reforged and has been for a while. They can still do damage, but again, considering the cost, you have to work very hard to get your money back. The Warlords, however, are a different proposition. They can do absolutely devastating damage uh, more easily. And the Alcarondas Faithful, of course, dangerous. Even for the Gwythi Rock Door, that could be dangerous, actually. And there is a big cavalry contingent for the defenders here, which means they're going to have to work really hard to get their money's worth out of this. The Muma Kill, as well, under the command of Fear Panther. The Camping Panda, by the way, playing as Umbar. But um, Fear, Pan Fear, Fear Panther, Muma Kill are pretty much the ultimate high-risk, high-reward unit. And I'll be really interested to see if he can get the most out of them here, because if he can... A real boon for Harad. If you can, it's money down the drain. Um, it's just the nature of a unit like this. Especially in multiplayer, the AI doesn't tend to be able to respond to you using the Moomakill against them all that well. Whereas human players, of course, once they know the weaknesses of the Moomakill, it's much more easy to counteract them. Still, I'm glad we get to see them, because we don't often get to see them because of how difficult they are to use, effectively anyway. Serpent Guard are also here, and a unit of the Black Serpents as well. So, again, a big cavalry contingent. They have enough, I think, to screen the main Umbar army to actually get into a safer position. But I think they are going to have to go right round the back end of the map, to be honest with you, because going this way, you're inviting Imladris to pin you in place. The rest of the Haradrim army at the top of the keep. We have the demons, we have the trollmen, and we have the champions of Nafrat. So, again, I don't think the trollmen represent really the ruling class of Harad, if I had to guess. I would assume that the ruling class would be the serpents, but... Uh, they are often the ones at the back because they are just straight up the most effective of the uh, Haradrim roster. Another unit of trollmen here. Some Southron pikemen, which are an armor-piercing pike. It's just their stats are so low that it doesn't appear to be OP in the same way that it could potentially be with the First Legion. Dismounted Serpent Guard with the armor upgrades as well. The uh, dark red banners and uh, more Southron pikes here as well. We could also see some hidden units like the Hashari here and there. Speaking of which, there are units back there. Those are Drake Broodlings under the command of Pingu. Pingu's turned to the dark side, it seems, as he is now playing as the Orcs of the Misty Mountains. Some heavy goblin archers just here to skirmish, um, so they'll be quite happy to trade ammunition with the heavy archers from the attackers, because they're not obviously going to be able to do outright damage, um, unless they really go after something like the Light Cardland Pikes. Heavy Goblin Crossbows, on the other hand, very different story. They're going to be vital if the defenders are going to win, because they're going to need the stopping power of the crossbows to hit useful targets. Heavy Goblin Spears will be good for holding the line. The drummers are here again. Morale boosting capabilities, like I said, are apparently not exactly what we thought they were. So they are useful as in a sense, but maybe not nowhere near as useful as we thought they were, which is interesting. We've also got a lot of cave trolls in here. Heavy Goblin Halberd, so a big horde of heavy goblins, which is good to see. Lots of numbers for the defenders as well. White Uruk Fearmongers, we've got some Black Uruks of the Mountains, the Goblin King's Bodyguard are in there, and I would almost bet my house on there being uh, Blackback Mountain Berserkers hidden in and amongst things as well. But without further ado, let's begin. And of course, the first action is going to be happening on this side of the map, simply because the attackers are significantly closer to the defenders over here, and they are going to need to let Umbar through. I didn't hear of any sort of grace period. Having said that, if there is, and it becomes immediately apparent that there is a grace period going on, which, yeah, Imladris are marching backwards, aren't they? Okay, so that's a bit unfortunate, actually, because I was kind of looking forward to uh, a bit of a mad dash for Umbar to try and retreat. I feel as though it's maybe a little bit too nice of the attackers in many ways to allow this to happen, but um, we'll make a cut and we'll rejoin when the battle is beginning. So I think we're actually going to get underway here. Not as big of a cut as I was expecting, and I'm actually quite glad that we're going to see some uh, quick action in this fight, because you can see the Haradrim riders charging down the hill, and the dwarves not putting any anti-cavalry out front means that the Serpent Guard are going to get a very nice charge indeed off onto the 3rd Legion. So things are starting off well here. I mean, to, you need to get the most out of this cavalry if you're going to have success. I don't know if the Muma kill you're going to get the most out of them by charging them into the guts of this formation. Because stuff like the Barding Herd and the Lake Town Pikemen, you can see they're immediately skewering one of the Moomer Kill. They're going to do a lot of knocking over of the Dalian units, but they're not actually going to... Well, actually, those Dalian Spearmen did take the charge, so I mean, they did do some damage there. The Drake Broodlings as well are charging into the side of this Dalian formation, but Dale, unlike Khazadum, do have quite a lot of their anti-cavalry units out front and centre. 
The dwarves caught a bit flat-footed as the uh, slower forces of the dwarves may very well uh, have been in the face of all of this very fast-moving serpent cavalry. This unit of 3rd Legion in particular is getting absolutely skewered. Should be going after the warriors as well, should be spreading his cavalry out a little bit more. The Hashari shadows using their body piercing projectiles to good effect as well. The warlords are down here, so now the Black Numenorean cavalry is joining in the fray. And it's it's rough here. It is definitely very, very rough for the Bardings and for the Dwarves as the Drake Broodlings also push their way through the lines. The huge mass that they have makes them very difficult to control, both for people being attacked by them and for the people trying to command them because they can get themselves split up quite easily when they do this and obviously this means that it's much more difficult to actually control the unit but so far so good it's a risk for defenders to bring this much cavalry as we saw last time and ended up not paying off in the end for them there it will be quite interesting to see if it does pay off for them here though um, and you can actually see that the Gwaiti Rock Door and the Dunedain Commanders are on the way over their presence is sorely needed actually the Black Numenorean cavalry has pulled back quite a long way here come the Mumakilt, and they are going after the Warriors of Khazadun, sending many of them flying, doing a lot of damage actually there. Massive amount of damage. I mean, the Mumakil are such an awkward unit to try and use because you can't really control when they attack and when they actually charge and do damage and when they just knock units over. But on this occasion, the Mumakil are knocking them over. The Drake Broodlings at this point are routing, but a lot of damage has been done. At this point, though, the Serpent Cavalry has been dealt with. The Serpent Cavalry, of course, is pretty lightweight in terms of what it offers. The Mumakil are going to fall here as well, but they have really been wreaking some havoc. They've been doing some damage to the Dwarves and to the Bardings. Are they going to get a point-blank Tusk Strike? No, they're not. And the last of the Mumakil does indeed fall. But all of those Dalian and Dwarven Archers were shooting into the Serpent Cavalry, killing it off pretty quickly because as far as Cavalry goes they are fairly lightweight and with the reinforcements now from Imladris and from Cardlan with the... presumably with the Dunedain Commanders. Well, there they are. They were thinking of chasing Umbar along the cliffside path. They've thought better of it in the end. But yeah, it's going to be... I mean, the Black Numenorean Cavalry is still pretty decent, to be honest with you. The Warlords of Umbar and Alcaron, that's faithful together, could certainly bring down the Gwaiti Rock Door. It'll be interesting to see what the Dunedain Commanders do here. I think they've been... Again, they've been caught a little bit flat-footed here. They were moving in. They separated too far away from the stronger Elven Cavalry, and now they're going to get sandwiched by more heavily armoured Lancers than themselves, but much more worryingly, of course. The Alcaron, that's faithful. The Melee Knights... Um, and they will tear the Dunedain limb from limb, and you can see just how quickly they fall there. Devastating blow that. And Cardolan's mobile section of their army is gone now, and I don't know if the Warius wants to take this engagement anymore, and the Umbar cavalry can overwhelm him if he wants. They haven't responded too well to the mounted divisions of the defenders here, the attackers. I think Dale and Khazadun, they were surprised at how much damage they were taking, but eventually they got their house in order, but not before they took a lot of damage at the hands of the Haradrim. And their setup initially probably wasn't right. They probably needed the Sons of the Fallen on the front line, to be honest with you, to try and mitigate that cav those cav charges. And now also, Cardan and Imladris not keeping their cavalry together, allowing it to get picked off by Umbar, and Umbar now also seeing another opportunity to charge downhill into the Warriors of Khazadun. They'll actually withstand the, these kinds of volleys a little bit better than the Haradrim because they've got that Black Numenorean plate. Uh, when they turn their backs though and the shield value isn't coming into effect, those Orc Hunters will still cause a bit of damage, but even more devastation wrought. The cavalry is still here. On this side of the battlefield, nothing much is happening at the moment. You can see that Imladris' infantry has come over here to join up essentially with Gondor and Cardlan, who will be pushing from this side. Don't know how much of Dale and the Dwarves will be really useful at this stage. But all three of these defending armies did invest a decent amount into their mounted units, so it's not as if we're dealing with three full armies here, but trebuchets, crossbows, javelins, strong infantry, as well as numerous infantry. It's a good mix here for the defenders, and they've started off the battle reasonably well. But of course, they do still have to deal with the quality, the armour, of the likes of Gondor and Imladra. It's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, but you definitely have tools to try and deal with Imladra. So using crossbows in particular would be very, very useful. As we just have a scan over at the Devastation here, there's a lot of dead cavalry as well, to be fair. Uh, those archers definitely did a real number onto the Serpent Guard. We also got a good glimpse of the best and the worst, really, of the Moonkill here as they charged downhill, caused a ton 
of damage to Dale. You can see most of this here would have been the Moomer Kill and the Drake Brute things as they came in all at once. But the Moomer Kill died off pretty quickly. Whether they did enough damage to be worth it or not, I'm not sure. I think considering it was the Moomer Kill and the Serpent Guard, I think you probably needed a little bit more damage to be done, to be honest with you. So while the Dwarves and Dale might be feeling a little bit rattled from that, I would say they can actually afford to be pretty pleased with their efforts. The Gwythi Rock Door now moving back to within the city. I'm not entirely sure where... Ah, there it is. I was going to say, the cavalry for Umbar is still reasonably healthy, so they could still achieve a level of kills to the point where I think it would have been worthwhile to bring the cavalry, but it's all going to be down to Umbar as to whether or not that's going to be the case. He definitely has the quality amongst this cavalry to, uh, to do the business. Umbar's cavalry is all about quality rather than quantity. Not known for their cavalry, really, within the Orients, but... There they are, nonetheless. The dwarves trying to form up. He's got his army nice and organised, but he just didn't have the fancy cavalry on the front line, which is why he uh, took substantial charges. But again, it looked worse than it actually was, I think. The defenders would be pleased their cavalry wasn't completely wasted, but uh, still. Well, heavy goblin halberds trying to shuffle back into place, as we can see Cardal and other ones leading the way. Perhaps you may think of Cardlin as the most disposable of all the attacking factions today, but they are also universally probably the most fragile. So, you could just be sending them into a meat grinder with not enough to show for it. I definitely think you need to be mixing things in. There's the God Hell even in Ladras as well. You can see there some volleys coming in from the Gondor Archers, getting a few tags onto the unshielded Heavy Goblin Halberts. By no means. A devastating amount of casualties, but stuff like the Heavy Goblin Halberds, the Southron Pikemen, represent a good opportunity for even basic archers to really fill their boots in terms of a kill count. And it will be quite interesting to see how the attackers decide to play this. They may try to skirmish them down, going after weaker units like that, but you need to leave some ammunition for the late game, I think, to try and counteract stuff like Demons of the Desert, Heavy Goblin Crossbowmen. You don't want to be spending it all on lower end units like the Southrons here. Again, another volley coming in. You can see the Heavy Goblin Halberds trying to intermingle more with the shielded Heavy Goblin Spears. So that's definitely the right move there from Pingu. Umbar should be in place now as well, really. And you can see their army is sort of spreading itself out. They got most of their forces up here to the top of the hill. They'll be intermingling with the best that Harad has. The rank and file of Harad the entirety of the Misty Mountains and a bit of support from Umbar is probably going to be the first challenge for the attackers here as they try to move forward and take this hill. There's also the small matter of these armies over here. Are they going to go around this cliffside path over here or are they going to go all the way around to this entrance over here? Or both, perhaps? They're going to see you coming no matter what. It's going to take you a long time to get over there. The element of surprise is not going to be all that important on this occasion for the attackers. You're just going to have to try and win through sheer brute force, I think. Rathlo trackers. Getting shot by the looks of things. Certainly not the uh, last word in terms of survivability. Again, they're kind of like the runt of the litter when it comes to this kind of unit, because like they do look like rangers, I suppose. Ghetto rangers, as I called them in the past. Their damage is okay, to be fair, but they don't have the body piercing that rangers are known for. Not for much longer. That'll be an interesting change to see. Uh, but they are going to try and do some damage here. But it might be worthwhile to try and counter skirmish into them, to be honest with you. Get some good damage done with the heavy goblin archers, the buffalo trackers. Don't do well when arrows are being shot at them. The goblin crossbows are on that cliff over there as well. Gondor archers fire arrows from the archers of Rivendell. Bit of a waste because they take up more ammunition, you shoot more slowly. You're very unlikely to break this front line with fire arrows at this point as well. It can be the sort of thing you use to good effect, to push the enemy over the edge. When it comes to routing, especially against a faction like the Misty Mountains, but not when like they're still reasonably healthy. I don't know what the South Rons are doing here. Still the Black Numenorean Cavalry falls, falls back. Nice view that they have surveying things from the top of the hill. Very large host moving forwards though. 
Dale and the Dwarves, probably a little bit cautious after being uh, rattled by all of those cavalry units earlier on, including the mighty Moomakill. They may be difficult to use, but they're still an intimidating sight as the fire arrows land. A few of them scoring hits, some damage done to some heavy goblin archers, a couple of spearmen getting grilled as well. In the Dismounted Serpent Guard, with the armor upgrade, like, then you're not going to do tons and tons of damage to them. But among human line infantry units, their forte is definitely being in melee with a bit more damage and a bit more melee defense. Even with the armor upgrade, you could do a bit of damage, especially with elven archers. But again, you're not going to break them from that distance. It's going to be quite difficult as well. You can see fire arrows being loosed in possibly to the halberds. He could also be targeting the cave trolls, trying to do a bit of HP damage to them. Heavy Goblin crossbows are right here on in full view. I mean, this would definitely be the target I would be going after with some of my archers if I were on the attack here. Um, and some of them are. I believe it is the Guathlo trackers finding their marks, doing what they do best, and killing some goblins. Still no general advance in terms of infantry just yet, though. Hashari stalkers getting into this position over here. Going to try and shoot into potentially Dale and the Dwarves as they move forward. Again, the Dwarves are guarding their front line with non-anti-cavalry units, and the Warlords of Umbar are going to take no prisoners there, absolutely squashing some second Legion Axe Guard. They're going to take damage here, though. Point-blank shots from the Orc Hunters, especially when they turn their backs, their shields are not pointing in the right way. Again, it's more damage being done. More damage that's being done fairly unnecessarily. With a bit of communication, Dale could be screening for the Dwarves with their Barding Herd and with what's left of their Lake Town Pikes. Because then if the cavalry charged in, they would uh, very, very quickly regret it. Alcarondas faithful moving forward. Swords drawn. Maybe not quite as devastating as uh, as the warlords before them. Oh yeah, I was going to say, don't do that. I did also see the trebuchet fire just then. What is the camping panda targeting with his artillery, I wonder? Probably in Latras units, I would imagine. If you're not using it when the melee engagement... Well, I guess the melee engagement is getting underway. Ooh, and he managed to score a nice hit there into the Bruinian River Wards. And in there are some dead fountain guardsmen and crossbows. So it may not be the best in terms of bulk kills, but you're getting some good damage done there. Gondor archers being attacked. I think this is a little bit foolhardy. The cave trolls are pretty good at breaking lines, so you can see how far they've managed to get into the enemy formation. However, they are the weakest in terms of all the sustained co like special trolls, basically. Mountain trolls are like regular trolls. Cave trolls are better than they are. But they're not going to be as sturdy as Olakai, Trolls of the White Hand, any of the Angmarim trolls, um, and not even the snow trolls. But yeah, they're going to try and uh, stop this now. To be fair, most of it was archers on the front line, so the trolls probably would be able to do a decent amount of damage here. But now with Gwythi Rockdor on the way forward, Gondor sending some more dedicated infantry. Even Gondor infantry is not the best thing for bringing down trolls, but in terms of just sheer quantity here, the trolls are eventually going to be overwhelmed. The rapid response force was Greenway Garrison Spears, which is pretty much the worst infantry unit in the game you can send against trolls. Very low damage. Spears don't get a bonus against trolls. Trolls don't count as cavalry, they are infantry, so the spear malice actually applies to them. What you want is anti-infantry stuff, so shock infantry if you can. Um, Armour-piercing shock infantry tends to work the best as well, so something like the Axeman of Lasarnak would have been the best thing to do here. The trolls are going to fall eventually. They're making a nuisance of themselves. A bit of friendly fire there, unfortunately, but they do manage to hit centre mass into the Greenway Garrison Spears and the Gondor infantry as well, so again, these kills really starting to add up, you have to say. One last brave troll. Wathlo Trackers being attacked by the Heavy Goblin Archers from the high ground. And he's still alive, like, they're sort of moving and retreating their forces here, but this troll is still not letting up, and he's going to go to town on these Gwathlo Trackers, who are not the best at dealing with this sort of thing, even if there's just one. I wouldn't go for these if I were you, but I think this is going to be his his final hurrah, because the Elder Enway should be able to bring him down. Spear Malice or no, the Elder Enway Spearmen are just going to be too much for this lone hero. Yeah, and there he goes. Interested to see what's happening over here as well. Looks as though the Hashari Stalkers moved, probably because they were being skirmished by Dale and they didn't want to lose any more. And Dale and Kazadum still just taking their time with this. 
Yeah, this is a little bit more like it. I mean, there's still opportunities to charge the second Legion, if I'm being honest, but they are at least covering their rear now with halberdiers and pikemen, which is good to see. Dale and the dwarves getting ready for something. I wouldn't go over this way if I were them. I would move around the back over here, certainly, because it would give the opposition team something else to think about rather than just defending this one choke point over here. More fire arrows from the Archers of Rivendell going after the Heavy Goblin Archers and the Serpent's Fangs. Poison arrows from them. They're a much sturdier archer than the Heavy Goblins. This is a little bit more interesting though. Serpent Guard pulling back. The Heavy Goblin front line has been engaged and they are going to be backed up by a few South Rom Pikes and I think this unit of Serpent Guard is going to remain on the front line which is probably for the best because can't help but notice that the next reinforcement column looks like it's going to be some Elder Enway. Which is not what you want at all. Meanwhile, yeah, again, you can see here, charging in, because normally charging into pikes is a terrible idea, and only one rider died. You can see that if you have the opportunity to charge pikes when they aren't set and in formation, and it's a unit that's already taken damage, like this, the charge will still connect and you will do full damage. So again, good use there of the cavalry from the camping panda. They have been a real pain, you have to say. And again, look at this, like, they're guarding their rear with the wrong units again. They should be using the barding herd for this. And the warlords of Umbar have to smell blood in the water here, because the second legion are a dangerous, dangerous unit later on in terms of the damage they can kick out, especially against Umbar's infantry. So the camping panda doing exactly the right thing here can cycle charge the second legion at his leisure and with that the cavalry definitely would have been the right way adding all of the cavalry kills up would have been the right thing to do the shari stalk is coming back potentially now that the dwarves and dale are a bit distracted by the cab potentially get some uh, good body piercing damage done there lots of the dwarves are very heavily armed so they will be less susceptible to range of fire but range of fire is truly the most devastating weapon in the game in a siege like this whether on the attack or the defense Crossbow still firing away. Front line to front line. Elder Runway Spearman defeat seems certain. They're fighting uphill into a combined arms phalanx, so that isn't too surprising. I would imagine as well that the Elder Runway are probably what the crossbows are shooting into because they are taking some damage, and the crossbows would be the primary cause of that. And they need to deal with this, really. The attackers floundering a little bit at the minute, you have to say. Archers of Rimdal out of ammunition, just adding some more warm bodies to the front line. They won't be warm for very long if they keep this uh, manner of organisation up. They have picked a very nice shape to their defence here, the defenders, but the attackers have been walking into a few grisly situations, this being one of them. I'm surprised, to be honest with you, that Kotumba and Cabbage Juice have not really cottoned on to the fact that these heavy axemen are not really the answer when it comes to guarding against these cab charges. Slowly but surely, the Umbar cavalry is falling away, but slowly is the operative word there. Because it's mainly because of the archers' damage that they're taking when they pull back out when their shields are pointing the wrong way, that they start taking that damage. The axes themselves, they... I mean, in sustained melee with cavalry like this, yes, the Axemen can do a good job, but not when they're being charged into oblivion like this. They need spears. And halberds. And it's about time they did this. They need to get behind these barding herd, but that poor unit of second legion there isn't going to be able to escape. More good damage. And this cavalry is still a factor. I mean, even if they do get behind some pikes and halberds and leave it at that, I'm surprised the black shots have not been shooting in to salvage the situation. I know they may want to use them for later on, but... And at this point, I would say, yeah, don't bother shooting because you're not gonna, you're not really gonna undo the damage that has already been done. Gondor infantry heading onto the front line over here. Meanwhile, this has got all the makings of a real meat grinder about it. This fight, I think there's javelins here, isn't there? Yes, there's bandits. Bandits getting absolutely rinsed by crossbows and archers. Hefty amount of damage done there, but cheap javelins, like I said. I don't think Cardinal will be too unimpressed that they're lowly bandits are absorbing some ammunition from crossbows and serpent's fangs and getting a few javelin volleys off for good measure as well but so far the phalanx holds strong i do think that the attackers probably need a phalanx unit of their own on here to counteract the admittedly lower tier south Ron pikes and heavy goblin halberds but i think even a unit of lower tier cardinal pikes would be enough to see the elven quality in particular on this front line start to start to shine through can see what's going on back here. I mean, I think Umbar are the ones that have been entrusted with this. 
and they have. I mean, yeah, they've got, again, very nice positioning here. Casimir's Rangers, as soon as they turn that corner, they're going to get a full face of body piercing, ar of body piercing arrows. So uh, no rest for the weary as it uh, pertains to Dale. They are going to move forward, uh, lead the way with their bowmen. So, I mean, counter skirmish is the best way to deal with that. You know, the first few volleys will be very painful for the Dalian bowmen. But as soon as they get sat in position, they will out-skirmish Rangers. Rangers with their lower armour after all. And perhaps pave the way for some Dwarven success, but you can see that the cavalry just waiting menacingly. They need to do a better job of dealing with that than they have done so far. The trebuchet has ceased firing, so it's only used a bit of its ammunition thus far. And now to help shore things up, another unit of heavy goblin halberds. This is the beauty of fighting as or alongside the Misty Mountains. You're always going to have more men that you can commit to the fight, potentially. But this is a little bit of a worry. You can see there the Heavy Goblin Archers trying to hold the flank. And, of course, they are hideously outmatched by Elder Runway Spearmen. And uh, this front line is starting to turn against. Ooh, but uh, Turn against the defenders, but the Demons of the Desert firing in there. They're going to do a lot of damage to Elder Runway Spearmen and Gondor. Which is just the one throw and then retreat. I like that. A few of those will get back up, as you can see, but some good damage done there to a blob of attacking infantry. And the Elder Enway mean that there's enough high quality on that line, although I think most of that ammunition actually hit the basic Gondor infantry. But I think they'll take that. Serpent's Fang is coming back. Decent in melee as well with those two-handed Shotels. Gondor Spearmen moving to the front line. That'll give a bit more rigidity. Not maybe the damage dealing that they would have wanted here. And now back come the Heavy Goblin Halberds. I mean, they should just engage, really. They've got an opportunity to actually hit the Elder Enway Elder Spearmen from the side, which will allow those uh, armor-piercing pole arms to do a bit more damage. And you don't want to be taking straight-up fights as the Goblins against the High Elves. Yeah, the shape of the engagement here is a little bit messy, which isn't great for either side, but I think the defenders will probably be okay with it as it stands, because... They're able to get a bit of value against stuff like Elder Enway, and they're able to utilise their crossbows and their serpent's fangs. It's a good effect here. From the front, those uh, shielded Imladris Guardians won't take that much damage, though. Imladris Guardians coming up from this side as well. The crossbows are a bit of a different matter. The crossbows are actually targeting the Gondorians. That's a bit of a mistake. Because as it comes to melee, the Imladris Guardians are the most impressive unit of line infantry on the field. Even without the armour upgrade, I would say that they outperform the Alcarondas Legion. I say that with a heavy heart, because the Alcarondas Legion are one of my personal favourites. Serpent's Fang is taking a few javelins, but you can see that a lower damage javelin, to be sure. Allowing the Serpent's Fangs to get more volleys off. Meanwhile, over here, Umbar moving forward, so you can see that they have essentially stopped the Camping Panda from doing what he was originally going to do with his Castamere's Rangers by leading the way with his archers. And uh, this is actually not a bad move, this from Dale. He has managed to lure the Camping Panda into essentially a melee engagement that he probably wouldn't have wanted to be in initially. Because now he's going to be on the receiving end of those Bardishas of the Barding Herd. And that armor-piercing phalanx backed up by some solid spearmen should be enough to actually deal with Alperondas Legion, unless they have a phalanx of their own. And they do. Belagaya Pikes are not on the same level of quality, but they can outrange the Barding Herd. You can see this is what you want to see when you set up a phalanx. A gap between the two groups of units as your units hold them at arm's length. The Daily and Bowman are firing, but they don't have really the best angle as such. They should probably be going after the Belagaya Pikes if they can, but if they can't, they should just cease fire. Because with this kind of angle, you do actually risk getting a bit of friendly fire if you aren't careful. We'll keep tabs on that engagement as we move back to the front. Where there is a lot of stuff going on. Trolls have been committed again, trying to break things up. Seeing the uh, the chaos in here, and perhaps seeing an opportunity to use their other trolls they have got in here. Uh, they'll kill bandits for fun, the cave trolls, but... And Gondor Archers, to be fair, they are going up against mostly units that they can kill with relative ease. Which is... Perhaps slightly concerning. We need to get some more units in here. Minheriath spears, again, like I said, basic spears. Maybe not the best thing to be using against trolls. You can see, even against these kind of foes, though, trolls may be a little bit underwhelming. Cave trolls are meant to just be line breakers overall, but you can see they are falling away fairly quickly. Again, another unit that you, it does require quite a bit of finesse and reforge to use. They're not as beefy as they are, relatively speaking, um, to how Divide and Conquer does them, as I've noticed. 
merits to both ways, I would say. Hashari throwing their daggers and then getting into melee. Their melee defense might prove to be a little bit of a concern for the Imladris Guardians. See, there's some Black Uruks on the front line as well, trying to add a little bit more quality. What passes for quality among the Orcs? They will do a better job than the Heavy Goblins, at least, but they will still lose fairly handily to Elven units of that tier. A few more throwing knives coming in. They are doing good damage there, the throwing knives of the Hashari, and they can hold their own in melee as well. It's still an engagement, I would say. The Elves will probably fancy winning, but it's not one-on-one -on -one at this point. It's a combined arms defense, and this choke point so far has held on resolutely. The balance of forces is evenly matched. Are you sure? How about that? Blackback Mountain Berserker, so I haven't lost my house. That's nice to see. Meanwhile, and yeah, you can see now, with the pikes on the front line, it sort of takes... It, well, it doesn't sort of take away. It does take away the uh, phalanx advantage that they are already counting on here. Um, and this stadium front line is now starting to falter. Can try and use their skirmishers. I mean, at this point, with you losing the front line, it's not the worst idea. There's some... Um, Daily and Spearman on the way forward. There's also some depleted dwarves by the looks of things. Warriors of Khazadum are decent, but they've already been savaged from their treatment at the docks. They had to sail here, even though the dwarves don't really like that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah. Probably not going to be sailing again after this, if they survive the battle. There are the drummers doing their thing. Demons of the Desert are back again, looking for a good opportunity. And they do have a decent angle. There's a few Black Uruks in the way, though. I mean, if they can hit center mass, even though a lot of it's basic Gondorian stuff, the amount of kills would probably be worth it. Late on, of course, Demons of the Desert still have some latent utility as an infantry unit. They're not as impressive as the other troll men in melee, but they're still not to be taken lightly. Two-handed spears as well, so they actually are very good against cavalry in sustained melee. Off the charge, of course, that's one of the ways that you really want to be dealing with them, preferably before you get javelined. I mean, there's still a lot of units back here. They look, it looks fairly sparse, but that's because everything's spread out and in loose formation. Been a real meat grinder, this fight. Been one of those kinds of sieges so far. And, yeah, it's been, uh, definitely been a tough one for the attackers so far, but they can always guarantee the attackers that they're going to have a little bit more staying power they can afford for this kind of thing to happen. I mean, Greenway Garrison Archers were never going to achieve that much in melee. But also, the defenders have been utilising a lot of their ammunition. Throwing knives, crossbows, poison arrows. All of that sort of thing has already been largely utilised. I think they have held some stuff back, but maybe not enough. And as we get into the late game and we start to see more of stuff like the Gwaithi Mirodain, the Mlothian Honor Guard, stuff like that, we may see that the defenders... Not entirely up for it, because you can see, even with all this support, slowly but surely, the higher quality of the attacking units that have been thrown in the way, uh, that have been thrown their way, has been pushing back the largely goblin and southron built front line. The drummers engaged in melee by the Minhiriath men at arms. They are shaken, actually, the Minhiriath men at arms. They don't want to be seeing too much routing from Cardinal, the most susceptible to that of all the attacking factions today. damage being dealt. Hashari biding their time and waiting. There's still more Haradrim back there. Still Umbar hold on. Again, this is where for Khazadum, something like the First Legion would have been absolutely brutal. But there's also Blackbacks over here from Pingu, so they're feeling quite confident here, the defenders, that they can really bleed Dale and Khazadum dry, and I mean, that is what they have done so far. That cannot be denied. The Akrondas Legion and the Ardenaian in formation. There's more on the way over as well from Harad, so good teamwork. Everyone chipping in for this particular defence. I would assume the Serpent's Fangs will have ammo, and they do, and they're going to try and take their pick of some targets, do a little bit more damage. What are they going to go after, I wonder? Are they going after a worthy foe? Well, they are, but the problem is the Blackshot Dragon Slayers are so tanky, and the Serpent's Fangs don't have a huge base damage on their arrows, actually. The poison and the fact that they're really good in melee is their selling point. Killing a few of the Blackshots 
getting a few shots going long and hitting the hammers as well, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Could go either way, that choice. Meanwhile, starting to push back now, you can see some Gondorians breaking the lines. Ravenhelm's getting in and amongst the troll drummers, they'll make quick work of them. But Hashari and Dismounted Surfer Guard around, if they overextend themselves here, the Ravenhelms, they will find themselves in some pretty significant trouble. Yeah, this front line though, it's uh, it's very much living on borrowed time. Those Heavy Goblin crossbows are still firing away, still trying to get as much damage done as they can while this front line is still kind of active. Yeah, Southron Pikes, a few Black Uruks left, but with the Fountain Guard here now, backed up by all of these forces from Imladros, the numbers of Cardlan also swelling forwards. I'm afraid it's all over for them. What are these crossbows shooting at? Slowly getting their uh, bolts loaded. Yeah, going after Elder Runaway Archers, who are in melee. I mean, they're good enough in melee, I think, to actually justify that. And you may as well try and get as many kills on whatever it is you can at this point. Yeah, heavy goblins broken and fighting to the death. Serpent Guard being committed a little bit too late, and this is perhaps a bit of a misjudgment from Fear Panther, which could end up costing his side the game. We'll have to wait and see. The lighthouse in the background there as the Demons of the Desert get themselves into a worrying position for Gondor. They're going to rip these Ravenhelms apart. Oof. Going right down the line enough as well to hit the Greenway Garrison footman. Ripping through them as well. Dunedine Captain's probably catching the edge of that as well. Yeah, that was devastating. Ravenhelms and some Greenway Garrison footmen there on the uh, wrong end of a devastating volley from the demons. Black Uruks also over here, stopping the continued march of these Elder Runway, and they will win that. But it is a little bit scattered at this point. If the attackers commit forward all of this stuff back here, they could surge forward, carry that momentum with them. But I can understand their caution, considering how this game has gone so far. Well, this fight over here has just been... <coughs> units throwing themselves against one another. Hammers of Gundavad have been committed to the front line for the attackers as well as the warriors. Um, and in response to that, Harad uh, looking like they're going to get some troll men in here as well. Nice bit of AP which will be good at helping out against the dwarves. And over here, Ardenaim Shield Guard and Alcarondas Legion in reserve. A lot in reserve to be fair. There's also the White Uruk Fearmongers but they need to make a choice here actually because there are two ways up, which is fortunate, but if they're not careful, they could end up getting cut off back there, and that is the sort of thing which could result in a situation which gets out of the defender's hands. They need to keep their shape here. A lot of these units could end up being uh, wasted, but only if the attackers are willing to be aggressive as well. It does look as though Demon's Hunter is willing to be so, but uh, more is needed. More is needed from way back over here. To be fair, Demon Hunter is actually the one with uh, most of his stuff left, so it does actually fall to him, I think, to commit forward more, but reinforcements too far away is a problem. You may not want to go into like the range of a lot of this stuff, like the crossbows and the serpent's fangs, but if you go too far back like this, you find yourself unable to take advantage of the fact that you were in the ascendancy over here, but now, because you've got so little on the front line, the defenders are able to take advantage of that and push forward with some reinforcements, do some damage with stuff like the Hashari, who suffer from the uh, floating swords as they do. But yeah, those raven helms broken and fighting to the death, getting torn limb from limb. And again, it just comes down to organisation from the attackers here, which has been quite poor throughout. Serpent's Fangs. Dunedain Captains fighting hard, but they're just getting overwhelmed here by the sheer amount of upgraded Serpent Guard that they're facing off against. Some units going flying. I'd assume that's the God Heli. Yes, it is. Uh, it's about time some more reinforcements got onto the front line, and the action of the Sarnak, especially with those Silverthorn arrows backing them up, should be enough to start turning back the Serpent Guard. There's still Hashari, there's still a lone drummer banging his drum for the sake of his fallen comrades. This front line, as well, from the Misty Mountains is more serious than the one previous, because it's made up entirely of Black Uruks and White Uruks. White Uruk Fearmongers. Oof, that's pretty nasty though. Trollman. They are shielded, but they are effectively shock infantry in how they're set up. Their armor is very poor. They have a second hit point, but that's some high damage elven archers that are targeting them down, and Fear Panther does need to move them. They're an important unit for this defense. 
And I guess the defenders, they are going to just be sort of, we're going to make our stand here. Or we're going to make our stand nowhere. They do have some units left up here at the top, just in case they do have to pull back. And they are, you know, they're keeping some ammunition in reserve. Umbar especially, he's got some crossbows, he's also got some javelins back here. Just in case they are required. But so far, I have to say, so good for the defenders. I would definitely put them in the ascendancy in this map so far, or this match. Gondor are trying to hold on here on the front line, but with the addition of the Whiter at Fearmongers, that's exactly the kind of unit that the rank and file Gondorians are not going to enjoy facing off against at all. A very fine unit of halberdiers that the Misty Mountains have at their disposal. It does, I think, fall apart. Ooh, hello as well. See over here the cavalry trying to make a nuisance of itself. Pushing in, just letting these units know that it's uh, entirely possible we could charge into. It does, I think, fall to Dale and Kazadum to try and make something happen over here. I know it's not the uh, the easiest task in the world to force your way through an area like this, but you do have quality and you do have damage. Uh, Hammers of Gundabad defeat seem certain. The Black Backs and the Trollman represent such damaging Berserker class units that it's really proving to be a nightmare for Dale and Dwarves to try and force their way through this narrow cliffside path. Eventually, I think they should have the numbers to do this. I don't know if this cavalry is able. Oh, and he does manage to charge in here, the warlords. He will get some kills on the second legion and the barding herd, but he charged in so far that the halberds and those bilateral axes could do some damage in return. I highly doubt this guy is going to escape with his life. Maybe he will, though. Alcarondas legion. That is the general. No, it's not the general. General was in the Harbingers, wasn't he? Surprised this guy's still alive. I mean, they could clean this up. At this point in time, I have to say, may as well use your cavalry like this. You just try and whittle down the attacking manpower as best as you are able. The Ardenheim Lancers moving a little too slowly, really, to get a really nice charge off. They just sort of amble into melee. Meanwhile, more Fountain Guard on the front line. They're trying to salvage this situation here. Pelagia Marines also coming forward try and use those uh, armor-piercing javelins to good effect. Nothing overly special for Pelagia Marines, but good enough here to potentially tip the balance in their favor. The other runaway sword mass is going the wrong way from the Warius. Like at this point, you're going to need these units on the front line. God Helene, for example, are getting stuck in. Very impressive unit in melee as well. So fighting alongside the uh, Fountain Guard. It is perhaps a bit of a worrying sight for the defenders, but we shall have to wait and see on that. Pelagia Marines. He has still got some javelins left alive. Hearthguard, Menatar. Bruinen River Wards here. And then over here, Sons of the Fallen on the front line, and this enough to tip the balance, at least temporarily. The dwarves forcing them back. The troll men started to fall away pretty quickly, which they do tend to do when their hit points are expended. Maybe not to the same level as like Urukai Berserkers or Blackwalls, but it is still a problem they suffer from. Blackbacks as well, kind of on a similar level, the two of them in that regard. The Blackbacks are a superior unit overall. But again, range support coming in, so the dwarves may finally be making some headway along this cliffside path, and this might be the moment where the defenders decide to pull back. It does look like that's what they're doing with their reserves over here. They may take up a position within the final stand. I mean, the trebuchet here. Thieves of Tharbad. You don't get to see them an awful lot. Assassin units that they are. Very similar to the Hashari on the other side. You tend to see the Hashari a little bit more, though. Perhaps it's because Cardlan are fragile in some ways enough. And the Thieves of Tharbad are an awkward unit to use with their sort of war picks. Hashari trying to make the most of their daggers. And the Serpent Guard, yeah, at this point again it's turning around. Once again it looks as though the attackers, primarily a Gondorian surge, but a few Cardlan and Imladris units here and there. Looking to be trying to force back against them another volley there. From the javelins back here, Pelagia Marines doing a good job. They don't do the, they, you don't get the instant gratification that you do with something like the Demons of the Desert. But over time, they are exactly the sort of thing that you want to be using against the Naru Naru Sentinels. 
They too have got like the Roman esque helmet ornament. Those crossbows still have ammunition, like they're a depleted unit, but slowly but surely they've probably been racking up a decent kill count for themselves, those goblins. We shall have to wait and see until the end game, I suppose. Clicking on the map on this one doesn't seem to result in uh, much responsiveness in comparison to a few other maps I've noticed. Kazadum, no. Some Daly and Bowman moving forward. Now is the time, I think, Dale and Kazadum need to move forward. Their allies need them to. They need to surge forward and do the business. Because Gondor, Cardlan and Ladris have definitely taken a real beating on the front line. As much as the cavalry may have rattled the uh, forces from the north earlier on, I do think overall it's actually been the infantry slog which has been more damaging to the attackers' chances of winning this battle. Pelagia Marines pushing forward. They're okay in melee, but they're nothing special. One of the more lightly armoured Gondorian units as well, you would have to say. So, the Hashari will do uh, quite nicely against them in melee, I think. Still some trollmen over here. Of course, their Blackguard's getting into the side as well, doing devastating damage to the God Helim as well. No rest for the weary. Another volley. Start going after something like the Elder Runway sword masters as well and I think that's exactly what they're going to be doing the demons are on their way back as well they, they, this has been an impressive performance of ammunition conservation I would say by the defenders they will run out eventually but they pace themselves well better than the defenders did in demons hunters last replay that he sent me actually on Edorus where it was one of the factors in why I think the attackers won that fight the defenders just dumped all their ammunition too quickly however a new problem, they have continued to commit stuff to this front line, but Dale and Kazadum could really spoil the party here if they sort of pick up the pace a little bit. They could just come around here from the rear and surround all of these units, which would be fairly disastrous, I would say. Serpent's Fang's trying to still do their thing. Heavy Goblin crossbows out of ammunition, I would assume. Alcarondas Legion, because the thing is, like, the defenders are still doing very nicely on this front line. The temptation may be to just remain here and have done with it. Swordmasters pulling back. Still have those cardinal and crossbows, still more thieves. Menatar Roman gatekeepers. There's also the uh, Umbar cavalry, which now seems to be taking more of an interest in uh, charging into the rear over here. But uh, not exactly fertile grounds for that just yet. Citadel guard and Menatar Roman gatekeepers. Uh, and half guard of Amon Sul just there. Uh, exactly the sort of thing you don't want to be seeing. Corsair Blackguards, I think, being just committed as a rear guard, really, to try and prevent the rear charge. And that's a little bit messy, I have to say, because you can tell there was an element of uh, panic about this. Like, we need to get some units down there to stop them from just charging into the back of our front line, where we've got a lot of units still there. They really should have seen it coming. Like, they had enough time, uh, the defenders, but I'm not going to be too harsh on them for that. After all, Alcarondas Legion are going to rip and tear their way through Lake Town pretty easily. Dale and Kazadum need to be a little bit quicker than this themselves to uh, take advantage of the situation as it develops, but the more units they take off this front line, the bigger chance of an attacker breakthrough, which they're probably desperate for at this rate because they're just running out of manpower. Let's try to force their way through here, the Gwaithi Rock Door. A couple of them may end up falling to the Ardenayim Shield Guard and Sentinels. But they do end up getting through in the end. Could charge into the Black Guard here. Wasn't much of a charge. Well, actually, no, they do get their lances down. It wasn't a perfect charge by any means, but they do at least prevent the Black Guards from getting a javelin volley into them. One of the riders falls as a result. Trollmen are going to get in the way now as well. There goes the Misty Mountains General. Most vulnerable of them as well. This isn't a town centre siege, so a full break from the Misty Mountains could be uh, all that's necessary. And I do think numbers-wise... Having all that cavalry makes it difficult for the defenders when it gets into this situation in the late game. And I do think the attackers just through, again, weight of numbers, quality units that they still have left. I, the way the defenders win this is if they still have ammunition enough to go around for those kind of units. And I don't know if they do. Sons of the Fallen and Hammers of Gundabad are a little bit depleted, which is why they're not 
overpowering the Alcarondas Legion and Corsair Blackguards that they are facing. A volley or two from those crossbows would uh, go a long way. The trebuchet moving into position. Crossbows as well. I mean, this is a good, good position this against Kazadum and Dale. Healthier as well, you would say. So probably the foe you do want to actually go after. The player has admitted defeat. That could well be the Misty Mountains. I don't believe he has anything left to him. Indeed, he doesn't. But you know, he was always meant to be the cannon fodder for his team, and he performed his job admirably. Trebuchet, meanwhile. Did it score hits of any description? Uh, yes, it did. Decent hits. It's on mainly Lake Town units, though, I think. And a few basic Dwarven units as well. They are scoring hits, but none of them decisive. They, I think they're going after the Guards of Custom. If you were to get a perfect shot, you would wipe out most of the units, so it's too tantalising a target for the Trebuchet to ignore, I suppose. Dalian Bowman heading over there, Gwythi Rockdor trying to head over here as Umbar. I think it was a bit of a mistake to panic and send these units down here. You needed to just trust that your units would get the job done. Nice hit into the Barding Herd there. Hitting something at least, but again, maybe not the decisive blows that are required. Dalian Bowman now overwhelming these Trollman. For all of the good moments the defenders have had in this battle, I think ultimately it's just going to add up to... They weren't able to be quite efficient enough. Citadel Guard are now moving forwards. There is the Umbar Cavalry in the backfield. Biding its time and waiting for a chance. Imladris's units are over there. Bruin and River Wards could be a decent choice for a charge. And Imlothian Honor Guard most certainly are not. And Umbar needs to move these units because Gondor is paying a little bit more attention and countering the cavalry a little bit better than Dale and Cousin Dun were earlier on. They are going to go after a few of these units here, and armor-piercing spears that they are. Double trouble for the Black Numenorean Cavalry. Yeah, this this is the charge I would take, because they're going to go into the Gwaiti Mirror Day and they'll kill off a couple of them, but especially against the Bruinian River Wards here. Good amount of damage there. Still getting some good value, you have to say, with this cavalry is the Camping Panda, which is nice the defenders are going to need all the help they can get at this stage, I would think. Trebuchet again, just biding its time. These units that were committed forward being uh, dealt with. Orc Hunts of Kazadum trying to push forward to establish more map control. Um, and they have actually drawn the Trollman of Harad out into a better position for the Orc Hunters to shoot at them with. Again, they are shielded, but lightly armoured. You may as well try and whittle them down. But the Orc Hunters, of course, are going to get torn limb from limb by Trollman in melee. A little bit premature, but we are more or less 10k frames in. And you can see that this is actually a point where the attackers, I would assume they were behind for large portions of this game, but they have taken the lead by a percentage point at this stage in proceedings, and you would imagine that this momentum will be enough to carry the forces of good to victory. Alcarondas faithful. Still trying to run down some depleted forces. Every kill helps. The Lothians have been circumvented, but so much damage has been done at this stage to cavalry. Why is Rockdor still alive? I think going after what remains of the Serpent's Fangs. No pushovers in melee, but with lances down, you would imagine that these followers of the Black Serpent should probably fall by the wayside. Hearthguard of Amon Sul firing up into, I think, the crossbows. Ooh. Yeah, I, I saw what he was going for there out of the corner of my eye and a, fort, a fortuitous hit, two fortuitous hits. The mighty guards of Kazadun being laid low by the trebuchet. Don't know if that's going to be enough to make the difference. It could be. Ranged units are the way they're going to win this after all. They still have demons, they still have crossbows. I don't know if they have... They just don't have the infantry oomph at this point, which, I mean, it makes sense. Why they're going after units such as that, I suppose. That being the case. All kinds of actually pushed uphill. I guess the Trollmen were pulled back because they were getting shot. Gwythi Rockdor interrupting the Trebuchet crew and the crossbows. Pike's coming downhill to uh, put an end to this foolishness. Potentially. Glorfindel himself getting a little bit 
close there to the pikeman. Sharp shoots in position. Yeah, this is the thing. Like, the attackers still have ranged supporting tools of their own. And I think Cardland's crossbows in particular might be too big of an obstacle to deal with. They've still got gatekeepers as well. Citadel Guard is still there. Black shots. Yeah, it, it's looking worrying. And they've had to abandon the trebuchet as well. Probably when it still had at least a couple of shots left in it. So, uh, all the things that are good news for the attackers. They've been under the cosh quite a lot here in this battle of the attackers, but I think they are still going to have what it takes to go on to win this battle by the looks of things. Eleven Castamere's Rangers. Yeah, at this point, I think it's probably a good opportunity for times two speed, because it's going to be probably a skirmish back and forth that the attackers will likely end up winning before we actually see the, uh, the engagements once again. You can see the Dale trying to get all of their units forward and in position. What's this back here? Is it just a really depleted unit they've left behind? Yep, it's one routing pike. Poor guy, saw his whole company charged down by Moomakil and Serpent Riders and Black Numenorian Knights. And there goes Lorfindel, torn apart. This cavalry just being thrown under the bus, but Gwaithi Rockdor has more than done its job on this occasion. Used reasonably well, I think, by the Warriors as the battle has worn on. Yeah, Corsair crossbows don't do very well in a situation like this. Like I said many times before, they are very glass cannon-esque. Hashari still have a bit of ammunition. Now they're going to move forward, leading the way with some disposable units by Cabbage Juice. Some Pelagia Marines, yeah, they're just going to try and whittle the enemy down as best they can. They definitely earned the right to do this, the attackers, with how forward they were at trying to deal with that choke point there, a devastating battle that it was. Not seen this, uh, we've seen this map, I think, once before, actually, and it worked out very differently, I think, because it was a scenario, I believe. Um, where the entirety of the city was uh, in command of a, a defensive force and the attackers were coming from this direction rather than the other way around. So definitely a uh, something we haven't seen on the channel before, which is always a good sign. Forward go the Orc Hunters. Battle is joined. In go some Lake Town infantry as well. I mean, here we have sharpshooters out of ammunition, but they can draw their maces at this point in time. They've got a solid selection of units here. Harbingers of Castamere, Champions of Naparats. The Ardenheim Shield Guard, good for holding the line, as are, of course, the Pikeman. But they don't have the support in place at this point that the attackers do. Well, I say that. Demons of the Desert, they are more than capable. Firing center mass into that will be enough to uh, at least worry the attackers. But I think even with that... They've already used up quite a bit of their ammo as well, so I would imagine they don't have that much left in terms of supplies. Though, like I said, they're a decent infantry unit as well, so they can be utilised in that fashion. Balance of forces is evenly matched. Yeah, you can see they're getting around the flank as well, which th this means it's game over. If the demons still had, like, a huge chunk of ammunition left, if they have full ammo left, for example, and this wasn't happening, maybe it would be a different story. I mean, the Demons of the Desert are going to have a ton of kills when all is said and done. But yeah, the Gwaithi Mirrodain getting into the back lines, so they're going to be able to interrupt the crossbows, preventing any support that the defenders do have. They're going to try and get in there with the Trebuchet crew as well. Doing their level best here. Yeah, you don't really want to be pulling off Champions of Nathrat or Harbingers from the front line either. This... Again, it's a bit of a panic. They're like, oh no, they've got units in behind our lines. We need to stop them from doing that. But all of the elite units are now pretty much off the front line. The champions have gone back. I'm not sure where the Harbingers of Castamere are really going, to be honest with you. They need to be on the front line. Doing the business. You know, to be fair, good amount of damage being done here. But yeah, the Demons of the Desert out of ammunition, I assume, being targeted by the Menatar, Rom, and Gatekeepers at this point in time. The uh, Warhammers of the Gwaithi Mirrodain. There goes... Kind of in the Dwarven General, so who was it? 
Ah, Cardman it must have been, because the half guard of Amon Sul are in there. They're doing quite well on this front line, though, you have to say. Pushing forward, those demons of the desert inflicted some pretty grievous wounds, but the fact they're still Citadel Guard and Nimlothians to commit forward out of ammunition skirmishes can also be committed, including black shots. It'll be a very close fight, actually, because of what the demons did, but I still believe the attackers are going to have just that little bit too much for the defenders. But the defenders, the defenders have done very well. Again, it's small margins. When you're playing in a 3v5, the smallest mistakes the defenders make can be punished, whereas the attackers can make glaring errors and it can make relatively little difference. There goes the Imladris General as well. General's dropping like flies at this point. And uh, Nimlothians aren't going to do too well in a straight-up fight against the champions. And actually, looking at that front line, there isn't much left at all. be very impressive if the defenders were able to uh, win this. And they still have stuff like the Harbingers in the backfield, but they need to get them out of view of the crossbows, really, because they are taking damage piece by piece. 34 demons of the desert. Nothing to be sneezed at, either. These crossbows. Can they get into place? The Citadel Guard are needed on the front line. I think, actually, unit to unit, they're in significant trouble. Castamere's Rangers as well, which I didn't actually consider... There may only be a few of them, but with those body-piercing arrows, they will be making a difference. The Earls have moved forward. Forward come what's left of the Guards of Kazakhstan. So yeah, with this as well, I still think the attackers will be okay, but it's been a valiant effort from the defenders here to defend the capital of the Haradrim. And even if it falls, it has been a bold defence. Bardi and Marchman are going to counter skirmish into the Castamere's Rangers now. Lake Town Infantry are breaking. Not the most important unit to break, but they'll take whatever they can get at this point, I think. Citadel Guard marching in. They do need to support the Nimlothians because they're getting torn apart by the champions of Nafrat and the Trollman. I do love the Nimlothian on a guard, but this is not the right matchup for them at all. Still those crossbows doing their best. Very depleted at this point, though. I think the gatekeepers might be out of ammo. If they are, then they'll be pulling out their halberds. Going down to business in melee. In come the guards of Khazadum and the hammers of Gundabad. Daily and Spearman are routing. Dismounted elves are shaken. Ooh, of course they're black guards as well. Probably, well, yeah, there goes the Gondorian general. In and amongst all the trollmen. This is not looking that good, actually, for the attackers all of a sudden. They had this battle on a plate, really, and... The engagements they've chosen have been a little bit suspect. Having a unit as strong as the Guards of Khazadum and the, the, the Nimlothians and the Black Shots, but the Black Shots have just been stood back here taking blows from the Black Guards, which again... Dale and Khazadum have been a little bit sloppy throughout the entire game, to be, to be honest. Over here, though, this is also a very simplistic engagement to fight in when it's just one choke point, so you can't say that Gondor, Cardlin, and Imladris were, like, putting on a tactical masterclass or anything, but I think the defenders have done very well. I would quite like to see the defenders win this, to be honest with you. If only because they've done really, really well to be in a situation where it was slipping away from them and they fought back to a, a really nice extent, but I don't know if they've got the... Like I said, I don't know if they've got the the gusto left in them, really. They have 17 Hearthguard have returned, which again is just 17 units of the Hearthguard's quality. It's not what you want to see returning to the field, to be honest. Hashari. What a fight it's been. Still the Corsair crossbows, but of course committing them to melee isn't quite the same sort of thing as being able to commit black shots, who are moving backwards, weirdly enough. Bardi and Marksman still trying to do the business against Casimir's Rangers, not having the best of luck at that, though. Yeah, there's just too many higher quality attacking units. There goes the Serpent Lord, finished off by a dwarf. They still have... A reasonably cohesive front line, but lots of Nimlothians, lots of Citadel Guard, still some Dwarves. The Gatekeepers are there, who can certainly hold their own in a fight. But a really high quality battle this one was. We got to see everything really, the Moomakill, Cavalry, Choke Points, 
twists and turns. Pretty much everything you could want from a siege. And the gatekeepers do still have ammo, which I assume they're going to be using on the Corsair crossbows, who are doing their best to return fire, but at this point it is rather a rather a lost cause. Our army is, is it indeed? Balance of forces is evenly matched. Mm. Oh, 19 Bardian marksmen adding their, their services to the front line. Yeah, and I think at this point, to be fair, nothing more for it other than to uh, times two speed it. Harbingers of Castamere, Trollman. Ardenaim units in general. Not going to go down easily, but this is going to be the end, but close indeed, within 1%. I imagine that will stretch out to be 2 or possibly 3 by the time this is all said and done. 2 is more likely actually looking at this, but a really high quality battle this. Very glad to be able to show it. Yeah, those gatekeepers out of ammunition now. Those hellbirds could... Uh, Find a lot of good use on the front line, I feel. But also got shown Nimlothians and Citadel Guard both spears. Even though they're both armor piercing, they still do their damage a little bit more slowly than equivalent tier infantry. Yeah, it has been stretched to uh, two percentage points at this point. Could it go to three? Not that it really matters. A good fight, but the forces of good, victorious, and the capital of Harad is indeed going to fall. Interesting to see what the kills are like. Obviously, we are viewing it from the perspective of Gondor, so the really interesting ones, I think, would have actually been Umbar and Harad, just to see what the Muma kill and Cavalry did. Cavalry of Umbar. Demons of the Desert would have been an interesting thing to see. Rangers. Uh, but alas, we will not be able to uh, see that. So, yeah, it's going to be 3% the difference in the end. Black Numenorians, the upper echelon of them anyway, locked morale as they are, will continue to fight to the bitter end. Harbingers of Castamere may not, may not be on quite the same level as the mighty Pharism Swordmasters, but they do their best to replicate a similar effect. And he is taking a real beating at the hands of most of the AP units as well, and he's still surviving as that banner gets in the way, and there we go. Yes, indeed. A good battle. A good battle, indeed. Big thank you to Demon Santa for that one. Um, and the uh, Adorous one that preceded this one, because they've both been uh, very, very good. And yeah, I would say that. I mean, the Dwarves and Dale, if they had organised themselves better, this would have been a more comprehensive victory, I think, for the attackers. But I don't know whether that cavalry, having that much cavalry, was worthwhile. Again, I don't think the Moomakil paid for themselves, to be honest. They looked impressive, and they did do a lot of damage, but it was against mostly more fragile units, I think. And they ended up falling away far too quickly. It's, it's a limitation of what the Moomakil actually are. It's very difficult to make them worth it without making them ridiculously overpowered. So I do have a lot of sympathy for the people who try to make the Moomin Kill work. But as it stands, they're just not worth it. Um, but they looked cool at least. The cavalry, on the other hand, probably did pay for itself more. More the Umbar cavalry than the Haradrim, who went in first and are more fragile. But yeah, interesting numbers this. Misty Mount's actually getting more kills than Umbar, which I find to be quite peculiar to tell the truth but Umbar to be fair left most of their strength, real strength anyway left for later and by that point the battle was already starting to get away from them so I don't really blame the camping panda too much for that as for the attackers, Imladris as you might expect getting the most kills, Dale and the dwarves suffering the most again which based on how the battle went I think we can see why what did the damage for Gondor though? Northern Waste? I don't think so Southern Waste is more like it Fountain Guard did well, I imagine that was because when the Frontline fight really started to swing in their favour. It's because the Fountain Guard were holding that push up. Nimlothians, a lot of that kill, a lot of those kills were against higher end cavalry and infantry. To be fair, uh, and against the infantry, they weren't really in the best of engagements for them. Going up against the mighty champions of Nafarat. Further down, so yeah, the Fountain Guard, head and shoulders really above everything else. Axe of Lasarnak getting not too bad, and a unit standard Gondor infantry nearly breaking the hundred barrier as well. Pelagia Marines as well, they may not be anything too special, uh, but they were definitely a worthy supporting unit on this occasion. 
Um, so yeah, big thank you to Demons Hunter for sending this one in, and big thank you to all of the players for being part of a very entertaining battle indeed. As for what's coming up next, I mean, it won't be until December really when this one comes out. Um, a lot is going to be happening over the course of the next couple of months really from my perspective. A lot more will be made more clear to me, um, which in turn means I could... I can start planning longer term as to how I'm going to make the channel more sustainable when my life starts to change a bit. Um, regardless of what happens, really, I'm going to have to adapt the channel a little bit. Um, it won't ever be going away, like I've said several times before. Um, and the idea is, like, the two pre-record videos a week are almost certainly going to be staying, sort of long term. That's sort of going to be the base upon which my channel exists. And then anything else is going to be sort of more flexible stuff that I can do to fit around um, what happens elsewhere. At least that's the plan anyway. Um, but we shall see. Again, that's that's more the sort of thing that by this time I might be able to start... By the time this replay comes out, I might be able to start laying the groundwork for what that's going to be. Um, and a preceding channel update presumably to be released at some point in January detailing what I'm going to do with that. But up until then... The two pre-records a week and the two streams a week um, doing mostly Divide and Conquer campaigns, um, at least until something else suitable comes along that uh, is live streamable for me. Um, that's going to be the plan for now. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and hope you'll join me for whatever is next.